The first session of the Fallout 76 beta is in the books, and I've got a panel here to tell you all about our experiences, the errors, the delights, the deaths, the wolves, and uh, some of the maybe warts that we've experienced with the game, along with some of the beautiful spots as well. Joining me is Gabe, formerly of Volatile Gabe, now of Switch Force. Gabe, how's it going? It's it's going. It's Zach. I just escaped a wasteland. For I was four, there for hours. four hours. You were you. Yeah, were, I was there. For, you were like a, a lifer, four hours straight from start to finish. Yeah, I, I didn't stop. Did you? I, I mean, I took a few breaks to like edit and stuff. Did you like go to the bathroom or eat? N- nah, nothing. Um, Seriously, I, uh, four put, hours of just straight. That's dedication. No, I, I put I put I put a giant tub under my. Okay, okay, my, okay. <laughs> cut this. Cut. We're done with that discussion. Um, I've given like my very like detailed thoughts, and I wanted this just to be more of like a conversation about how we felt. Um, I've also got my girlfriend Raven here, who is. This is her second dual stick game. So analog sticks of any kind are very uh, not your your cup of tea. That's a really right, good Zach, really good I'm going to interview pun. Raven throughout this video. What was her first dual stick game? Uh, Black Ops 4 last week. <laughs> Zombies. It was great. Um, anyways, just right. like a new player perspective. You guys play for a while um, and kind of just thrown into it, thrown to the wolves. Did not like when there I was, was killing no wolves. wolves. Well, you saw me killing the wolves. I didn't get any wolves. You didn't what wolves? Get any wolves. <laughs> okay, so let, let, let's just... Let's start off with just kind of our our overall impression, and then we can kind of go piece by piece. I've played before, so I'll I'll let you speak first, Gabe, since this was your time to shine. What did you think of four hours of Fallout seventy six? I thought it was laggy, but that's to be expected because Bethesda was pretty clear about the fact that their goal of this beta was to stress the servers as much as possible to test for launch, and I never had any like out like disconnections from their servers i never like disconnected completely a couple friends of mine did here and there yeah. but they were able to just jump right back in it's super seamless joining with your friends i was worried for a little bit because i didn't do too much digging into what this beta was going to be beforehand i knew that it was going to be like the entirety of the game but limited to four hours i had no idea if we were even going to be able to play together but that worked beautifully just joined the party right yeah. away on xbox i'm not even used to playing on xbox anymore that was like strange for a little <laughs> bit just because, you know, Switch is my primary console now and I play on PC. I'm so excited for the PC beta, by the way. Yeah, we but we set up over here um, joining each other. That was super seamless. We got into the server, me and Raven, like super easily, which was great. And then you spent like... A well, good 30 well, minutes. Well, you spent 20 minutes at first with character creation. And then we did, Gabe, we had a complete server like crash. So it froze up and it said like server unresponsive, like your controls have been disabled. Um, you were able to still, like, mess with your character for a couple minutes, though. Yeah, it was a good, you know, session to learn the controls. <laughs> <laughs> and with character creation? Yeah. <laughs> as the server get, froze? Get a feel for it. <laughs> and I couldn't do anything. I was just staring at Camden Park. Um, and then it did kick both of us out, erased her character creation, and erased probably, I don't know, five minutes of my progress. It clearly was just reverting back to an old save. I didn't have any other problems outside of that. I didn't really have much lag. It felt, to me, better than what I played um in west virginia at the pre-beta event but yeah we did have that one server complete stop and i saw some people on twitter saying like oh surprise it's not working and fallout and bethesda themselves on twitter put out that like hey there was a break in the action um but it, you know you can try logging in again and you'll be good to go that's funny because i never experienced that break at all and i got into the beta like a little bit early like uh, i hopped on twitter just to like see if people were like you know complaining about it not working even though there was still like a few minutes to go and people someone said hey it's live i logged in it went perfect i spent no time on the character creator whatsoever because i know this isn't going to carry over to the full game and it does to the full full game everything can carry over from here on out you are playing fallout 76 well, regardless, this isn't the platform I'm going to play it on. Yeah. So it's unless I can carry it over to PC, then sure. <laughs> yeah, Gabe, literally carry it. Take it out of your Xbox and carry the character to PC. <laughs> uh, I, I spent a lot of time. I made uh, a dude this time. I went with a girl in the, the at the pre-release event, and I tried to make a person that looked a lot like me. Did I do a good job? Um, yeah, he was really cute. Other yeah. Other than the part where he was, like, screaming. He, oh, yeah. I really messed with the photo <laughs> mode thing. I got into that. I made quite the uh, amazing, like, business card <laughs> photo. That was pretty fun. Your character... I was shocked, because, like, normally I feel like you can't make great characters in these kinds of games, but you have, you made, like, a pretty cute girl. It was extremely impressive. All the features and stuff like that. I was very impressed. Like, arches Massage, and yeah, massaging <laughs> yeah. the nose. Raven, how many cheeks... 
Raven, how many chicks and chicks bones did I you went, mess um, with? I went for 17. I was really trying to get a good lift. A, a really nice irradiated uh, face <laughs> with all sorts of oddities. It's um, hard to look cute out, out there. It, it really is. I'm sure that's really <laughs> tough on the skin. I'm sure it's just terrifying. Like, you try to, you know, anti-aging creams and all that, but best. you got, like, radiation. It's just really <laughs> tough to deal with. Um, I, I went initially with the same route I took at the pre-release event. I went through the first couple main missions, and then I kind of diverged completely from the path and the area of the map I explored. I want to know, Gabe, what you did. Did you follow the main quest? Did you find it entertaining? You were playing with a group, so I'm just curious, like, how your first hour uh, sort of went down. Okay, so we did do the, the, you know, first few quests. We had to learn how to do the building and everything like that. It works kind of similar to Fallout 4, but they've actually changed a lot. They've done improvements in the building that are very noticeable if you played Fallout 4. So we were happy with that. But beyond that, some of the stuff that took us... Like, a bulk of the time was those events. They're, like, random. There's, like, a daily event that was going on that you had to kill, like, this... Uh, I, I don't know if it was a super mutant, but there's this Destiny-style event system that they have going on where they'll, like, pop up. I'm assuming it's randomly throughout the map. You can fast travel to them. It costs a few caps I will, I will that, say that but... those world events are in set locations, and they're, as far as I know, set events in set locations. Like, the order of them and, like, which ones are appearing, that is randomized, but... The same events that I saw pre-release in the same spots in the beta. See, I, I didn't know that. I didn't talk to developers. I haven't played this as extensively as you. So that's that's good to know. Even those like daily ones, like it's always in those set locations. It doesn't ever change. The daily, I don't know. The world events is what I thought you were talking about. So like, there's the one um, by uh, the first sort of big city, Flatwoods, that you go to, and there is one where you have to reprogram um, the the bots there. And go into the agricultural center, and that's like the exact same quest slash world event mission uh, that just like will reintroduce itself um, for you to go and grab you know gear and loot and get XP. Okay, so after that, just to you know finish up the the stuff we did. We did want to mess with people because, you know, we were in a group. So <laughs> we did try to find people that are roaming solo and try to kill them. How'd that just go? to kind of just uh, the chip damage is Look, it is chip damage, it's but it's not as slow as you made it seem. Really? But but then remember, we also had like four people. True, that's so, true. I, I mean, I feel like they might have tweaked some things because I didn't die once during my time, the three hours I played uh, pre-beta. I felt like the punishment, and I don't know if it's because I was just rolling completely solo or because I was wandering into higher level areas. We definitely, Raven and I, got ourselves completely in trouble. We wanted to go to Camden Park, which is the amusement park down on the southwest corner of the map, and like... It, there were just some enemies that would like double, triple team you and just take you out in one or two shots. You died so many times. <laughs> Raven, Raven, how many times did you die? Um, not as much as Zach. I think that the damage. Yeah. I just got some guys out. You did. You were. Uh, <laughs> I for, saved you a few times for, for zero. Uh, zero training. You did well, <laughs> I, and I never got to see sort of the death save system, any of that. So I love that it puts all of your like junk into a like a doggy bag basically and you have to go and, and find it or someone else can come take it like raven just started stealing all my stuff um are you kidding me you stole my monkey don't you dare <laughs> jangles the moon monkey yeah how dare you <laughs> wonderful wonderful side quest uh and apparently it is a moon monkey that is multiplying across the map so definitely look out for him okay so did you go and do the morgantown airport quest game yes okay so that's as far as i got in the main quest um pre-release are you into the story, the lore, the hollow tapes? Does that do anything for you, or are you just kind of skipping through those and just focusing on the gameplay? Okay, for this, I, I wasn't paying attention, if, if I'm honest, because again, a group of us were all experiencing it for the first time. We're right. all talking to each other, trying to communicate, like, "Hey, this is how this works." So for this time around, I even skipped the beginning cutscene, which you know, if I'm playing the game regularly, I'm going to watch that thing. So yeah, that that wasn't the focus. Um, for, for, for today. I want to know when the next session's going to be because I want to yeah, keep playing, especially now that I know that this that this is going to carry over. Uh, I personally really enjoyed it, if I'm honest. I was worried just because yeah. the word of mouth that I had seen had been mixed at best. I and still then you think had... it's mixed at best. Like I was shocked to see so many people on Twitter being like, yep, that's uh, what an awkward multiplayer follower feel like. Up, oh, Yep, there's not a whole lot uh, see, But that's all lag. That, that's like lag and server issues. I think the core game there, right, if you polish this up in your brain to how it's supposed to work i think fundamentally it's all there well, like they're, they're the, talking the, about like missing characters missing dialogue missing story as sort of the meat no so i'm saying if you polish if you polish it up the gameplay elements that they have the systems at place are all good it does feel good 
you know, it's a Bethesda game. There's going to be bugs. They're, they're trying to crash the servers. This probably wasn't the ideal situation for what the game's going to be like post-launch. Because you also got to remember that. You know, we were just joking about, hey, 2018. But it being a 2018 game, those launches don't really go super well. Black Ops 4 was one of the few games that, you know, did a launch that wasn't really rocky. But you have to look at what this uh, thing's going to look like a couple weeks after launch to see what the game's actually going to be like. But I'm talking more like the story and the missing NPCs, and that is what I saw a lot of complaints on. That's not going to change at any point. Sure, performance-wise, it's going to get better. Um, but regardless, like, for me, I think that the systems there are fun, and I'm shocked how much fun I had uh, one, rolling solo into new areas, fighting some rogue super mutants, taking on some different world events, traveling up towards the Ferris wheel and the dirt track, down towards Camden Park, and the death penalty is so low that even in that high level area, like, we had a quite a bit of fun we had so much fun you took me on a really romantic date <laughs> you oh. bought this ice cream you we won went on me the widow maker i did jangles the monkey just for you until i, I know. traded it back to myself i know or st- i know i stole it out of your your I know, like, doggy you stole bag. It out of my doggy bag when i died hey so it's a rough i have a question for raven yeah okay so raven being a, a more amateurish video game player and that's not yeah a, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Was it like a little bit overbearing? Because Fallout is a little bit more of a hardcore franchise, right? That there's a lot of stats to keep up with, you know, leveling up your 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 special things like that. There's definitely was a it, lot was, going on on the screen that like I don't catch until I'm like, oh look, XP points. Oh look this. Oh look that. Oh, I can send a heart. Like there's definitely like a <laughs> lot of stuff that you can do. Um, if I didn't have Zach next to me telling me what to do, I probably would have never found things or how to change weapons or things of that nature. Um, but overall, like the buttons and all that good stuff is pretty easy to get a hand a like hand on top of once someone tells you what to do so you've never played fallout you don't have the the background (laughs) of like oh god they're missing npcs oh god this is supposed to be story and lore focused like if i just showed you this game which i which i did would it be something that like seems fun do you think you'd want to play it do you like the fact that it is multiplayer and it's more just messing around as opposed to like oh a very like strict storyline and you're following this and fighting set encounters Generally, I like storyline games, but honestly, this is a lot of fun, and it's fun to just run around and travel, and there's maps, and there's places to explore, and there's weird creatures everywhere, and people, and it just seems like a lot of fun. Yeah, I I didn't like the multiplayer at all um, when I played in West Virginia, um, like the actual West Virginia, but tonight was actually like a great test of like, my my big concern was like once you go through the main missions, once you explore the areas, what then? What are you gonna do? But it was pretty wild to just roam around and see what we saw. I don't know how long that lasts because again, we're still encountering new areas. The hope would be that okay, still you know you get to the end game and like the nuclear codes and the launches and the irradiated areas and all of that incentivizes you to continue. But I I if I'm honest, like I'm still as fun as it was to mess around tonight with Raven at Camden Park and just we were dying and coming back and getting cool shotguns and just seeing fun stuff. I gave they tried to give me a job. There was a robot trying to get me <laughs> start your ship now. And but it, his name a, was Zach. His name was Zach. Yeah. Very, very uh, very surreal experience. I've been converted into like a robot body uh, after the nuclear apocalypse. Um, I, I'm curious about something though. Like what level did you guys reach yeah. just just character wise? Well, real quick, just complete my thought and then we'll get into the levels and how far we got. I'm still very worried about once you explore all of the areas, which is paced pretty nicely in a traditional Fallout, is it going to be fun to be like, oh, I've already seen Camden Park. We spent an hour messing around there. Let's go back and mess around again. Because I don't know what incentivizes that after you've seen it once or, or even two, three times. Has to be loot. Has to. I mean, th- those events. I'm assuming that they're going to change places. I don't think they're going to be in the exact but same some place. Of them I know, like, some of them are tied to buildings. Like the one I'm telling you about is tied to an agricultural center over there in that first city area, and you have to be there to access that building. So I, they are going to be in those set places. And yeah, yeah, th- those yes. But I'm saying like there's like the daily ones. And I'm yeah, assuming daily challenges. Like, yeah, I, I don't know exactly how uh, those all work, but I, I just feel like. I, I don't know, like, the loot's going to have to really step it up because in four hours, I'm still rocking pipe pistols and uh, hunting rifles and not a whole lot else. I found some, like, awesome guns. I just can't use them because I'm not high level. Okay, so what what level are we at? Okay, I got to nine. I, I got a little bit past the halfway point of nine. Okay, I'm at 
eight and a half, um, and yeah. I did take a little break. I probably could have got closer to ten uh, if I played straight through. I, I also knew exactly where to go in the beginning, so I like rushed through uh, those early areas. It is interesting to note, though, that Raven, you were level two, yeah, well, which is right out of the vault, <laughs> <laughs> and I was level eight. And while we did die, it wasn't like it wasn't like oh, I was getting hit three, four, five, six times surviving, and you were dying in one shot. Like I don't know if they're scaling the damage or if you're just that darn elusive. But we were able to play together and not... I, I didn't feel like, oh, God, you're so low level. Oh, no, I'm really good with the machete. Yeah? Yeah, no, I'm trying. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, regardless, like, we didn't... The damage felt like it was... It, like, it was being I rebalanced. felt like I had a fair chance. Yeah, which was really nice to see. Um, did you see a lot of people, Gabe, when you were when you were just jonesing a around? Ton. I saw a ton of people. Did you? Okay, because for me, yeah. everyone was grouped in similar areas. And so when I was out on my own, I didn't see anybody except Raven. Yeah, I, and well, I, I I saw people in certain areas, and I made a note to one of my friends that said, "Hey, like this is like clearly a story based um, area here, so there's it's gonna be more populated." Yeah, but I, I, even remember, I also did more of those like event things that you probably like ignored just because you had done them before. So pe there's people there as well. So uh, yeah, I experienced people. I will point out that I did tackle two of the world events solo, and that was nowhere near as fun. Um, I don't know, like, oh, you just touched on what I was gonna say. I was gonna leave it kind of towards the end a little bit, but Zach, I, I, I don't want to. My positivity about this shouldn't be mistaken. I do not want to play this game alone. Like, there's no point. See, if and, and I still feel like it's really fun alone. Like, I got most of my, I got three of the hours in solo, and like, I still like that. The, the world events are just tough because it's not like you can like call for help, and if no mm. one is near you in the map, you just either struggle bust through. And I got through them. I completed them like literally by the skin of my teeth barely and it, like, like like they're just not as enjoyable so for me it was like main missions exploring the areas and again like once that's done i am worried how much content do they continue to push how fun are the daily challenges without npcs to talk to without a a set dialogue infused storyline to follow like i will say that focusing on them solely because i didn't have a big room of people around me and distractions like those hollow tapes are a little long-winded and kind of boring it depends oh uh, th they're not npcs but some of those like robots or whoever on the holotape they, they're, they're funny there's some some cutesy stuff going on there but this is a fallout that's clearly catered to multiplayer that yeah, there's no secret course. secret about that so if, if you want a more traditional fallout experience i mean i mean who knows about replaying some of these games because they've been out for so long but the traditional Fallout experience that you keep, like, talking about with, like, hey, you have branching trees as far as, like, dialogue, and there's just, like, one set big story, like, NPCs, none of that is here. So I need friends around to keep me entertained with this. Uh, the building, something that you probably will never get really into like that. Yeah. Me and my group of friends, like, I have one specific friend. He loves building insane stuff. He gets these, like, huge structures. He's really good at it. We played, like, over, like, 200 hours of Rust together for, you know, crying out loud. Right. So th this kind of leans more towards the way we play games where we're having fun we're just like you know making fun of each other we're trying to and we play this exactly like it's meant to we go and we grief people we troll people yeah. we're like super like hey like gamers gamers like about that aspect yeah of and, it. and so, I'm, I'm never gonna play it that way i'm gonna do it solo through as much as i can and then i'll probably like just show you around because like that it's, it's fun to just sort of take you around and show you like okay look at these <laughs> cool places and kind of it, it was better to battle all that together because there was no way I could get through that area alone, like that Cannon Park area. I couldn't even see myself doing it alone. I think well, you and that machete. <laughs> well, yeah, that. <laughs> you were a major machete master. Throwing I, knives too. Some not very bad. nice direct hits. Yeah, not bad. Also, slightly, you were slightly creeped out by the creatures. They were definitely creepy. I do take issue with like how much of the enemy menu is like scorched, scorched, scorched for lunch, scorched for dinner, scorched for dessert. Yeah. I, I mean, did you see anything super cool creature-wise? I ran into some super mutants. So, yeah. some, uh, I'm going to mispronounce these guys. Uh, Marilurk, Marilurk. Marilurks, yeah. Yeah, uh, some of those. Um, we had some some special enemies as well. We came across some like super high level ones. Uh, remember, we only I, at the time I was like maybe like level seven or eight. Yeah, came across like a level twenty five like guy with a little crown on next to which are still like, killable. Okay. Like yeah, oh yeah, hundred percent interesting. You know, I don't know, like, obviously they don't want it to be so gated that you step foot in a certain section of the map and can't advance. Um, but again, like, 
the loot to me isn't like that exciting. I don't know. Maybe it gets a lot better and just we're so early on. Like that's still TBD. Um, but like, I, it's got to get better if, if I want to revisit these places or try to like farm stuff slash, you know, farm the events or whatever, if that eventually becomes a thing. Um, but it's interesting to me that you have no desire to play it solo. Nah, not really. I mean, I'm sure I will, but if, if I can play with my friends, I'd much rather do it that way because we want to build like this like huge base because when you set down your camp, it, it gives you like such a large area that no one else can like build a camp on, so that's yours. Right. So we we started off with a structure. We put a couple turrets on the on, on the roof, make sure that nobody was able to get by because remember, we come from like Rust and things like that. So you want to, and Rust doesn't really have turrets, but we want to like fortify these things. So hmm. in our head, people can't come and mess with them. And you've said that it's not really easy for people to come and just like take over your stuff or anything like that. But they're so, you know, em- enemies roaming around again in our head. I don't know exactly how all this works. I haven't had the time with the, the sure. new but yeah, we, we fortified as best we could. We got some turrets going up there. It looks nice and intimidating. There is a sense of accomplishment to that when you build like, a, a fortress and it just like looks super cool and everybody in the server that walks by is gonna be like oh my god what is that thing like yeah th- that sense that sense is like re- really rewarding too i'm probably a bad host because i will never mess with the building i just find it dumb but is that something that you would you think you'd like what if i built a castle i don't know can you, i don't think you can build a castle I think it's why pretty, not it's pretty yes limited. you can you can no no yeah yeah okay. yeah and oh, you because yeah. you keep finding b- blueprints as well to build like more stuff all right so you build us a castle with like rides in it, like Splash Mountain. Oh, you're gonna put okay. The, that, okay, that, all right. No, now that's stretching. It. <laughs> can't, can't do that there. But uh, you, you can at least give us a bed that's not on the floor, so I don't have the danger of disease when you rest. Ooh. There, there. Okay, that I did want to talk about. Not once did you have to worry about water or food. No. You stim packed a few what? times. Okay. She only I played, was constantly she, she thirsty. Limited, okay. But what I want to say okay. about that is, I played for the entirety, uh, or nearly the entirety, as well as earlier. And, like, this one seemed notably, like I said, more difficult, but I still feel like the survival elements are so slow to deplete. Like, it's not even a thing. Like, I almost wish it wasn't there just so it wasn't a nuisance. I, dude, like, I don't know. Like, I had to drink water a, a fair amount. I had to eat a fair amount. But it's so it's so plentiful, and it only ha- – like, I don't know. I just find Oh, it- yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Water's plentiful. Yeah, like, I never find myself short on water or anything. It's you just, like, just a, like, a button prompt that – isn't 100 percent necessary. I don't know. Yeah, I guess but there's, there's a lot of things in the game that aren't really necessary. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel just as I felt about it. I was impressed and surprised that it only crashed once. I thought in general, like it ran and held up really well, which is good to see. Um, and for me, like I did not have a whole lot of slowdown. I didn't see a whole lot of lag, and it seemed to perform well. Is there a place or a moment, Gabe, that you want to highlight as sort of like your favorite part of this first night? Sure, we went. I, I, I don't, I'm not gonna know the name of, of the of the area, but with the crocodile, the water park. What's that called? Wavy Willard's Water Park. My favorite place in the game, baby. <laughs> yeah. So, so we went there. I made it a point because I saw the the video you had made about it. Yeah. Where where you went into the mouth of this like alligator, and there was some actually some good loot up there. I, I found a blueprint for this like special type of grenade of some kind. Sweet. And there was like there was some like bear traps up there that like kind of caught me that I didn't know were gonna be there. Yep. And uh, there there was also some event thing going on there, and. Yeah, so so I'll say that that area slash moment w- was was my favorite. But a couple of things that that I wanted to touch on b- before you know you, you start closing this out, I guess. There's so many side missions and events going on that that right side of your screen gets so full of text. Yep, that information the- overload was definitely an issue I brought up with from the beginning because you can close them out, and I will say like. I know you don't want to play it solo, but it's so much easier to manage everything solo. Paying attention to the hollow tapes. You know, queuing up your quest and taking quests off and making sure that you're, like, heading in the right direction and you don't have a million markers and you're not being distracted. Like, it is far easier to follow and far easier to efficiently and effectively, I think, move through the game. Maybe not from a combat standpoint, but from, like, just a general foundational structural progression. Like, it feels to me still stronger on that side and like if if people are saying oh there's not enough r- real fallout i think if they play it solo they'll find more of it not in the story not in the npcs but just the feel i like that a whole lot yeah i i probably have to side with you there i, I agree but yeah i don't know i was kind of like annoyed by mm-hmm. the fact that like all those markers are there and, and you can like unmark them so that they're not there but 
just like naturally like the game just starts putting everything it's like oh now you have to go do this you have to go do that and you like turn around and there's like literally a waypoint in every direction yeah. i was like what the heck is happening you touch on that as well right like just so much going on like yeah. where do you even begin where do you even go all of these things and obviously like i i fast travel had you fast travel to where i was which was not maybe the the best idea we had but minimal time but then it was like boom just like everything in your face and i'd be interested if like i just like left you to it like how I overwhelming it would feel. I don't know if I could have done it. I mean, just, I'm sure you could have. I'm sure you could have gotten I mean, through eventually, it. but like, <laughs> there's just so much going on. Yeah, the map, the mini map, is like majorly. It's just too much. But again, like not having distractions of other people, not being in a room, not talking. Like I was, I felt far more comfortable this time around. And obviously, I have a grasp on it as well. But I still, I still say that this is such a strange walk the line experience of like it is a 2018 multiplayer rust style game that is either held back or enhanced by the single player elements and flip the coin it's also a single player game that is either held back or enhanced by the multiplayer elements and it just walks such a line i i do worry that they should have gone in one direction or the other far more aggressively and towing this sort of like it's still fallout but there's still multiplayer stuff to do I wonder if that hurts the game long term. It might, but Bethesda has made a certain type of game for a long time, and for me at least, it's refreshing to see them try something different. It might not be the grandest of successes. Maybe people don't even end up liking the game for very long. Yeah. But the fact that they're trying something different, for me at least, it should be applauded. Uh, way more developers and publishers need to do different things. And clearly, multiplayer is at the forefront of gaming, whether we like it or not. <laughs> the most popular game in the world is a free-to-play shooter that you can play with your friends. So true. And yeah, and I think it, it's silly to be pigeonholed to that one type of game because the last four Fallout's and you know five if we count New Vegas, they're all very similar structurally. Yeah, the story is different, and yeah, there's, there's differences, but well, except for one and two because those are like top down. <laughs> right. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, but. They they all do very similar things. So this one at least is trying to be different, and I appreciate that. Absolutely. I'll give you my two favorite moments. Um, one, I ran into a pack of super mutants on the road. They were surrounding a robot that was just trying to deliver a message, and I managed to take them all out at once through this forest. I'm, like, running backwards, trying to shoot them, change ammo. Like, that still to me is super exhilarating, especially because Vats is... not the greatest anymore for quick encounters like that. I, 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 I'm sorry. I like Vats. Do you? Yeah. Wow, I, I, like I just Vets. find it very like I I try to use it more here, and I just find it very ineffective. But regardless, like it, it's effective when quick enemies are coming at you, and you don't necessarily have the time to like you know aim down sights and, and try to get a perfect shot. Is if they're close enough to you, you uh, tap bats very very quickly, and you hit a very very quickly, you get like a ninety eight percent chance hit, and you don't have to aim. <laughs> I I use that for some that were running straight at me, but the super mutants who are. I don't know. It, it, maybe I was just too overwhelmed, but I did fend them off. That was really fun. And then I walked over to the robot, and he led me on this like very ridiculous maze-like path and plan to uh, deliver his message to a person that did not exist and was not there because obviously they were dead. That was really great. And the second one, slight minuscule spoiler uh, for the next 30 seconds. Okay, so if you head to the fairgrounds uh, in the northern portion, northwest portion of the map... You get there and it says, like, Jangles has been lost. Please help find him. And I'm like, okay, is Jangles a boy? Is Jangles a bot? Is Jangles, what is it? And there's stuffed animals all around the park. There's, like, these bears and different things, pandas. Um, one of them is, like, a Chinese import panda, which I thought was pretty cute. And then you find, like, I kept missing Jangles because Jangles was a monkey in a spacesuit. And I didn't even know, like, I thought I was looking for, like, an actual person. But it was just, like, such a, like what the heck a moment when I found him and then got my XP, completed the side quest, and now every time I see Jangles, because there's more Jangles, it's just like a, a really nice little, little little memory that I've already made. I found a bunch of beer bottles at, at, at a park. That was one of the quests. Yeah. Uh, also also to to help a, uh, what was it, a mayor or something? That's a robot. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I like that yeah. guy a lot. Oh, best moment. It tops it. I mean, I had a lot of fun playing with you, so that was really cool as well. Oh, okay. But, cool. But I'll, I'll, you can give your moment in a second, but... No, my favorite moment was, Gabe, the whole time I played pre-release, every vending machine was empty, and I found a Nuka Cola machine that had two Nuka Cherries and one Nuka Quantum, and I felt like freaking lotto winner. Like, forget the whole billion dollar thing, I just found a triple jam in a vending machine and it wasn't completely empty. 
I found one cherry. My friends found quantums. And that's the other, like, we didn't really talk about this, but the loot when you're playing with your friends, like, it's not like you're getting the exact same loot. If there's, like, a, a chest or something, it'll have something different for each of us. Yeah. Like, so, so I thought that was very cool because I think it's boring that if everybody gets the exact same thing. So my friend's like, hey, come here. There's a bobblehead here. I'm like, oh, I don't see no bobblehead. And like, dude, it's, like, right here. I'm about to grab it. I'm like, dude, like, there's nothing there. So he got he got a bobblehead even. I, I, I forgot the, the perk it gave him or the... The boost they gave him there, right. but yeah, he also found some quantum. I never found that. The 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 coolest thing I found, like yeah, it was cherry. Really interesting. Yeah, I found one bobblehead as well. Okay, favorite moment from your your first time with Fallout. My favorite moment is when we went to the dirt track. Yeah, <laughs> and we raced. Yes, because I really need to work on my running skills. Yeah, I was trying to teach her like <laughs> the whole idea of clicking in the stick and pushing forward. <laughs> Apparently, is painful. <laughs> so we went to the track to test out my skills. Yeah. Um, they weren't so good, so instead we sat in the <laughs> tires, we pulled out jangles, and we had a Nuka Cola cherry party with our drinks and our monkey and just sat in our tire. Quite quite the lovely experience. Yeah, it was my favorite. The trading stuff works really well and like is good if you're ushering like a, a new player through the world, being able to give them things and you can charge them or you can make it completely free. So I was able to kind of uh, once we got our bearings, sort of fill her uh, her character up with some good stuff. Although he did charge me fifty dollars for my soda. Yeah, okay. Well, it was, it was a little. <laughs> it, was, it was super hard for me to find. Like I told you, that's like six hours, seven hours, eight hours of playing. I just wanted a sip. And no, I found <laughs> three of them. So if I'm gonna give you one of my three bottles, thirty-three percent of my we mustache. We were cheersing to the last seconds of the game. Yeah, it it said like server shut on imminent, and like we played till probably like eleven oh seven, eleven. I don't know. Like definitely got some extra minutes in there. Uh, I did start a countdown. I'm super curious to see how they continue this thing like it's very weird to me that that one wrapped and we don't know when the next one is i think that they are gonna sit back collect the data see how the servers held up and what what today's tuesday i guess so i I would guess and i have no knowledge probably in the weekend where there's like way like way more people because for me at least this was pretty stable yeah yeah there's lag and stuff but i think they're gonna try to crush servers even more so uh, i would say hopefully sometime during the weekend is what i'm guessing i expect it to be every day really yeah i expect there to be sessions every day like four hour slots every day but it is super weird that it hasn't been announced i don't know it to me that's just so on and it's, it's even weirder that it's not like hey this is being deleted like glad you got some time like I made my character that I'm just rolling with as my main. And, and like, now I have to just wait and maybe I get to see him tomorrow. <laughs> maybe you can set up a play date. Yeah, with my dude. Yeah. Zach, speak, speaking of dating, Zach, if Raven is going to be playing this, you got to tell her it's not dollars, it's caps. Caps is what you're spending. 50 I'm, caps. I'm sorry. Gosh. Yeah. Wow. Get your house in order. Yeah, how, <laughs> how, how sad is that? Real yeah. sad. I'm going to give you a, a lesson on Fallout. What's going on? Can there be like a quiz yeah. at the end? Yeah. Okay. I, I will say to your credit, I literally told you nothing. <laughs> yeah, I got no information. And you at did all. so well. Thanks. Yeah, that's cool. Very cool. All right. <laughs> Final thoughts. Anything else you want to add that we didn't touch on, Gabe? Uh, n- n- nothing so far. I, I didn't expect to, but zero indication of any of the nuclear stuff happening. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, nobody's close. Uh, yeah, it's not something I expected. Are you excited to but... play the next session? Yeah, yeah I mean, depends on when it is. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Bedtime dependent? No, you know that's not my problem. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> yeah for... Uh, uh, I go back to this. For me, it's just about getting people together. Yeah. So if, if I can get, even if it's like one more person to play with me, then I'm cool. So I just want to get through the, the content. Like, I'm again, I'm, I'm content solo. I'm sure you and I will play some more. Um, but... Yeah, I'm like I I feel very similar to how I felt previously. I still think it's super fun. It awkwardly toes the line, um, but there's a lot to like. I think from both a single player and I'm learning multiplayer perspective. I don't know if I'll ever get into the the craziness that you're talking about, Gabe. But like, I will say a major franchise that I've enjoyed previously by myself. Getting to bring someone else in is pretty freaking cool. Like it made me think like, wow, what if like the next Bioshock was co-op and like I could play no 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 no. i don't no, want no, it no. i don't want it i'm just saying like <laughs> it's just such a weird idea of like bringing bringing friends family significant others into these games that you like a lot and getting to show them around or like i don't know I, I had my like 2018 moment like welcome to the internet you can do things with other players and interact and show them around <laughs> yeah, fun times all right so we're all excited to get back in i think we all enjoyed it 
and all had a good time. Let us know your take, your thoughts uh, on the beta, if you had a chance to play, or what you've seen thus far, how you feel about Fallout. I'm sure a lot of people will feel negatively because they just wish it was Fallout 5, but I do think, as I stated before, there is good stuff here and content worth consuming. Uh, so keep an open mind. Let us know how you feel about this little review podcast show type thing. And until next time, everybody, have a fantastic day. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Raven and Gabe, for joining me on this launch beta night full game carryover four hour. I'll take my caps now. What? I'll take my caps now. Send my caps over. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me give you your cap payment. Um, uh, based on how much it is when you get a PvP kill, I'm going to give you six caps, Gabe. That's all you, that's all you get because the, the balance of the economy probably needs some work. But they've got time. And it is time for us to go. Until next time, thanks so much. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all the Fallout 76 stuff. I've got shit covered. You can go check Gabe out over on Switch Force, a wonderful site, a wonderful channel all about Nintendo Switch, which does not have Fallout 76. Um, but it will soon have its own new co-op franchise, Pokemon, which is doing the same freaking thing. Now I'm kind of excited to do that in Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. All right, and thank you, Raven, for being here as well. Till next time, everyone, drink so much, all it. We love you. And we will see you all later.